Hello everyone, I'm Tim with Golf Cart Garage. We are back once again. It is Thursday, February the 17th, 12 noon Central Standard Time. Uh, we're here every week. We're live on Facebook and YouTube right now at the same time. We're gonna see if we can answer some golf cart related questions that we get here at Golf Cart Garage on a daily basis. Uh, we're gonna see if we can help some people out, save some people some money. So let's get started here. <clears throat> See, question number one. May even talk to some people in the live chat today. Question number one is my club car has been plugged into my charger for one and a half months. The power supply to my charger was lost at some period during that time because of a winter storm. When the power comes back on, will the cart start to charge without unplugging the the cart to the charger. When I used the cart at the next available time, it acted like the batteries were not fully charged. And this is from Dwight. Okay, Dwight, I'll tell you, I understand your question. I'll tell you what it says in the service manual, deep inside the service manual. Not too many know this. Not too many people even know this because they didn't, they didn't read that deep into the service manual. A club, a 48 volt club car that has an onboard computer. The way that it, the way that it words this in the service manual is that when you plug your golf car in, you know, normal operation, it will charge and, it, and the needle will go up to about 15 amps or whatever, and then slowly drop throughout the night, and then and it shuts off. All right, it shuts completely off, and you walk away for, you know, two of uh, one and a half months. After 14 days, this is what it says in the, in the service manual, after 14 days, if the charge cycle is not interrupted, that the charger will come back on and charge your cart. Now, also, you'll know this by when you come back to your cart, the yellow light on the dash will be blinking. A lot of people think that yellow light is just for low voltage. Well, it's not just for low voltage. It will come on for low voltage too, but it will also come on to, to let you know as, a, as an owner that something must have happened that the charge cycle was interrupted uh, uh, on your golf cart. It does not say in the service manual whether or not it's come back on or not, but I wouldn't think that the light would be telling you that the charge cycle was interrupted if it was going to come back on. Because if, if, if it came back on and recharged your cart, then you wouldn't even need the light. So my understanding of what it says in the service manual is that the answer to your question is no, it's not going to recharge your cart unless you unplug it and start over and then the light will get cleared, you know, once you, once you, uh, once you replug the cart. It doesn't specifically answer your question though as you ask it, but it, it gives me the impression by the way that it's, that it's worded that it will not until, unless you un unplug it and plug it back in. Now, if everything is was right, like we said, or like I said, after 14 days, it'd come back on and charge your car. All right, let's see. Let's go to number two. This is from Hank J. We have an accessory that requires a rechargeable 3.7 volt, 600 milliamp hour battery, and we want to hook it into the cart's charging system. Is there an easy way to do this? I remember speaking with Hank J about this this past week, and what it is, it's a, it's some fancy golf courses. They have these GPS tracking systems that you know, you know, you, the, they can see where they're going, they can see the, the the lay of the course, and they they are hooked to GPS and satellites. That's the device he's talking about, and it has a rechargeable, small rechargeable, like a watch battery or something inside of it. It's designed to be recharged on a USB port. So, but they didn't want the USB port uh, available to the, plug, to the public. So the easiest solution, because we're talking about a 3.7 volt or, uh, battery that needs to be charged with the power that comes out of a USB port that he didn't want to be available to the public is that the solution that we came up with after talking, we just put a hidden USB port under the seat somewhere and that would, that would, that would fix his issue. Let's see, number three. This is from Jim H. My cart looks tilted from the back. Can you tell me why my cart looks like it's leaning? When I look at it from the back, it is tilted to the left, not level. Why? It only looks that way from behind, not from the front. Well, 
all golf carts over time, uh, probably especially ones that spent a lot of time on a golf course uh, after four or five years, you know, or, of use, they tend to lean to the driver's side, and that would be leaning to the left, like you said when you're looking at it from the back, that would be leaning to the left. It's just because, you know, a golf cart spends a lot of time with one person on the driver's side, instead of, it's not always, the weight's not always evenly distributed, like it's not always, doesn't always have two uh, big men in it, so like so sometimes, a lot of times it only has one big man in it. So it's a, it causes that spring on the rear to wear out. And it will, you can also, it also wears out the front spring depending on what kind of golf cart you have. They don't all have front springs. So, but yeah, that's what it is. You just got a worn spring on the, on the driver's side. Now there's a couple of ways you can fix that. Uh, one of the ways obviously is you get a new set of springs or a new set of heavy duty springs and be less likely to, to lean as quickly. Or you can just swap them. Put your worn one on the passenger side and put your good one on the driver's side or the one that's not worn on the driver's side. You can swap the two rear springs and that would correct your problem. But you're eventually going to end up with the same problem again. Alright, let's go to number four. I recently purchased a 2001 Easy Go. The guy said fill the batteries with distilled water once a month, so I did. It has the easy fill system with the one hose attached to the water jug. The wheel was still spinning, but I heard water running onto the garage floor. I disconnected the hose, the filling hose. Next day I went to move the cart to clean the floor and wouldn't move, forward or reverse, L. This is from Carol S. That is the that is one of the cons of the all-in-one battery filling system uh, when they work they work great but it's a lot of moving parts in those systems that can go wrong the way that they shut the water flow off is with the with floats in every one of those battery holes so those floats can get stuck. They can get uh, some corrosion in them, you know, from the battery acid or, or just debris uh, from inside the battery cell. Uh, and if they get stuck, then the water is going to continue to flow. And that must be what happened because they're designed to shut off to keep you from, uh, to keep what happened to you from happening. Now, as far as your cart not moving after this, and this is the only thing that happened, that doesn't explain that. I mean, this, this should have nothing to do with your cart not, not being able to go forward or reverse, what, what you're describing happened to your batteries. Uh, that shouldn't have anything to do with your cart going forward or reverse. So that, that could be a, I think you might have an unrelated issue to, to that incident. Okay. My cart, EasyGo TXT 2009 TXT, runs 12 to 14 miles an hour. Would like for it to run 19 or 20. Is there a chip or something I can buy and install myself? Plug and play. I think the chip that you're referring to uh, was called a freedom plug, and it, it, they, some people call it a chip, but it's really just a plug. But that was very popular in EasyGo TXT PDS. 36 volt cars. A lot of people wanted that, but your car is not a 36 volt uh, PDS. Uh, the in order to speed your car up, you're going to have one of two choices. You can either get easy go to program it, because yours is going to be a programmable situation, or you can just change out your whole controller and your motor yourself. You can buy you know a combo kit or something to to get the miles an hour, the speed, or the power that you need. But uh, you're referring to a device used in an older car than yours. Okay. Number six is from Ben M. When I try to accelerate, the cart jerks and has to be pushed back. What could be the cause of this? Well, depending on the model and make and year of your cart, it could be a number of things. Uh, from the information that I've gotten from your question, the only thing I could say with, in your case without more information is to check all the obvious things like uh, obviously look at your battery cables. Your, 
grab every one of them. Grab every one of them on the post and make sure that every one of them is tight. You know, don't if you find one that you can move with your hand, then that's not tight. You got to you got to make it tight so you can't move it with your hand. You make sure you don't have any wiggling. If you have any battery cable connections that are unusually corroded, wash that corrosion off and check that one for tightness too. Because if you had a lot of corrosion that sat there for a long time, the cable could get loose. All right, let's see number seven. I cleaned and sanded all contacts, replaced solenoid, replaced forward and reverse. Cart is still slow. If if what you mean by you replaced, you, you sanded and cleaned all the contacts, I'm going to assume that you were talking about the V-Glide. I'm assuming you're talking about the copper contacts of a V-Glide. If not, then you're talking about the copper contacts of an old style wiper board, which could have been in an Easy Go or a Club Car or a Yamaha. There were, there were several of those. So if, you, if your contacts are good, none of them are burnt, and your accelerator pedal moves the entire range of motion when it's on the floor, it goes to the last contact, then that's all you can do as far as your speed goes. So if you're still slow, you must have another problem. So you need to check into your controller. And in your, depending on which year your card is, your controller could be different, a, a lot of different forms. Uh, check, you could, if you have the five solenoid system, that's your controller. So you could have a solenoid burn. You could have a micro switch out that's causing you not to get your, your speed. Uh, you could, and obviously you could have a low battery. So I'd like to see battery voltages you know, first before I you know, would go any further. All right, number eight. Why does my gas-powered club car sometimes not move when I push on the gas pedal? When the cart does this, I can push it and it will go. Hmm. So, are you telling me that it you push on the gas pedal, the accelerator pedal, and the gas motor does not start? Or it does start, and the cart won't move. That's all because I'd have two different. I'd be would be two different things I would want to look at there. If it does start, and does not move, then I would want you to look at your clutches because your clutches must not be engaging if it's not moving. If it doesn't start, then it could be a number of things. Your fly the uh, the starter could be spinning in, uh, inside the belt. It could be spinning and not turning the motor over. Or it could be a micro switch, you know, that, that's connected to the accelerator pedal that's causing it not to, to do anything whatsoever. So I'd have two different answers depending on uh, if the car is actually starting or not. Now let's see here, number nine. Oil change from Daniel J. Is it okay to use synthetic blend oil in a 2020 Easy Go Valor with 11.5 horsepower motor? Well, the short answer is sure it is. Sure, it's, that's fine. Uh, I use synthetic oil and uh, all small engines. I use synthetic oil in my motorcycles. Uh, it's it's fine. The, the question comes into play, is it really going to be necessary to do that? That would be my question to you. Uh, because golf carts, if you change your oil regularly, even with regular oil, which is less you know less expensive than synthetic oil, uh, if you change your oil on a regular basis, it's already proven over the years that those little gas motors will last forever, basically, if you continuously change your oil and, and keep up with your maintenance. So the question to me is, is it really necessary to do that? This is completely up to you. I do it I, I, because of, my motorcycle doesn't take very much oil, so there's not a big cost, and neither does a golf cart. It doesn't take very much oil. So I do use synthetic oil. So it's, it's really up to you. Question number 10, AC motor, 2014 club car. It's very fast, but when going slow, flat or downhill, it's hard keeping a smooth pace. Going uphill is great. Have 10 inch low profile tires. Two thousand fourteen club car with an AC motor. So that means you have a 
I don't remember exactly if Club Card had that or if this is going to be a conversion. And if you have the Novatus conversion with the AC motor, then there are a lot of adjustments within that controller that can be accessed via Bluetooth uh, to, to make some adjustments. It sounds like you have some kind of regenerative braking maybe kicking in when you're going downhill that's uh, maybe set a little bit too strong and you need to clear some of that up with some of the adjustments that are available in the AC systems. That's what I would be looking at, especially since it works fine when you're going uphill, you said. Let's see, number 11, question 11. I bought a 2014 EasyGo RXV over the weekend. It has six inch Jake's lift with 14 inch wheels and 23 inch tires. Didn't notice at the time of purchase, but today in the garage, it appears that the cart may have some negative camber. I looked under the seat under under it to see if any of the Jake's package was adjustable. Tires are newer and aren't showing wear from the negative camber yet that I'm seeing. Any suggestions as to cause or correction? I remember speaking with this gentleman about this issue and uh, here's the deal with drop spindle lifts like uh, you know there's lots of uh, different types of lift kits out there. Drop spindle lifts are one of the lesser expensive lift kits and they're the easiest to install and they put your car up in the air just like they say they will, They'll, they raise it up just a little bit. But all they do is they replace your existing spindle. Your existing spindle is, is just is replaced with a longer spindle that drops down. That's why they call it a drop spindle. It drops down a certain amount of inches and therefore raises the front of the car up doesn't change any of your steering geometry or anything like that if, if, if it's cut at the exact same angle as your, as your stock spindle. Now, that being said, no drop, none of the drop spindle lifts that we sell have camber and caster adjustment. Uh, they just don't have, the, they don't have the ability to do that. That's only the more expensive lift kits that come with A-arms and, and different heim joints and, and tie rod ends. They come with a lot more parts that do enable you to not only uh, have toe in and toe out adjustment, but they allow you to have camber and caster adjustments. But drop spindle lifts have no adjustment. You're kind of, as far as your camber and your caster goes on a drop spindle lift, you're kind of stuck with what you have unless you find something bent, you know, that's causing the issue. But if there's nothing bent or anything like that, you're kind of stuck with what you have. And yeah, you will have to keep an eye on your tires for, for tire wear. That's number 12. I have a 48 volt club car and I'm trying to bring back to life. Can the OBC be bypassed or disconnected and still use the correct charger that came with it? interesting question because usually the question is posed the other direction they want to get another charger but so the answer to your question is no the the charger that came with your card has to work with an OBC the OBC is part of the charger it is the brain to the to the stock charger so you could modify the charger uh, to charge your card but it would never shut off you know, if you modified it, you know, so it, the OBC is what tells the charger to shut off. It tells it to come on and to shut off. So if you modified it, then it's never going to shut off. So you're never going to be able to walk away from it because it would just boil your batteries out. So the answer to your question is no. The, your, your best option there would be to get another charger that would, like one we sell here at Golf Cart Garage, is uh, Summit 2, a Lester Summit 2. It does not require the OBC in order to work. That would probably be your best bet. Let's see here, number 13, from Jerry. Hi Tim, my 88DS cart is so slow. Could the speed controller be bad and where is it? Well an 88DS is going to be, I believe that's the five solenoid system, okay? You have five solenoids lined up behind the batteries on, on, a, on the I-beam, on the aluminum rail right behind the batteries. That is your controller. That's the old style controller. That is called your speed controller for that particular cart. Uh, you probably have either a micro, and every one of those solenoids has a micro switch associated with it. You either have a micro switch that's stuck or sticking, 
fire one of those solenoids is bad if your car is unusually slow. You know, I mean, how slow is slow? If it's 12 to 14 miles an hour, that's probably about all it's going to do. But it might be less, if it's less than that, then uh, it could be one of those solenoids. Okay, let's see. Number 14. My wife bought me a used, this is from Erica, by the way, used bad boy instinct for my birthday last year. Recently it started crapping out. I thought the batteries were getting low and maybe the gauge was bad. So I charged it up, but after a short ride and coming up the driveway, it would barely go. I pulled the accelerator pedal off, but can't find a replacement. I've attached picks. Also, I checked each battery and cleaned. All good. Total output of 72 volts. Uh, there's not a lot of people that work on the bad boy buggies because, I mean, I know they look like an easy go, sort of. They look just like a lifted easy go, and they are based off of an easy go. But the electronics in them are completely different. They, they have all completely different electronics. We don't even sell any parts for uh, electronic parts for bad boy buggies at, at Golf Cart Garage. And I believe that EasyGo might own them now. So uh, I did see your pick that you, that you had included. And uh, I would submit that pick to EasyGo and see, see what they say about uh, getting that as a replacement. Because I think that was a pick of your potentiometer, but it's a different type of potentiometer than what we sell for regular golf cars. So I believe that was what it, I believe that's what it was. So they, they call easy go and I think they would be able to help you with that. Number 15, this is from Tommy. Hello, Tim. I have 2016 easy go refurbished cart, one and a half years old. Came with new Trojan batteries, four 12 volt battery series. I measured each cell with hydrometer and and all just fine. I measured the voltage of each battery and all just fine. When I charge the cart, I get a full charge on the gauge window. When I go to use the cart after less than five minutes, the cart dies and the gauge shows no charge. What do I do? Well, the gate, your battery gauge shows no charge. The battery gauge works off of voltage. Okay, so if it's going out at the same time your, your car's not running, then it sounds to me like you have a battery dropping out. You know, you, got, you have four 12-volt batteries, so you've got six holes in the top of every one of your batteries. Well, each one of those holes represents one 2-volt battery. A lot of people don't realize that, that each one of those holes is a 2-volt battery. So, so 2 times 6 it makes, it make, equals the 12-volt the battery. Well, if only one of those two volt batteries, one of those cells goes out, your cart, your cart won't run. It's, it's not going to run good at all. In fact, it'll drop out like just exactly what you're describing. So it sounds like to me that that's what's happening. You have a battery dropping out. I understand that you took a hydrometer test and it showed good, but you've still got a battery dropping out under load uh, in a very short period of time. It should be easy to find. Uh, I've talked about this test, this uh, load test many times using a using a, a regular handheld voltmeter with some alligator clip leads on it and you clip it to your battery and then go drive your cart with your voltmeter in the seat right beside you, you have it in the seat and watch your voltage like you should you hook it to one battery you're going to sell 12 volts it, it'll be on your voltmeter and then take off especially when your cart fails uh, and do that test in your case do that four times on each one of your four batteries and find the one that's dropping out. I think you're gonna you're gonna find one of them that just drops way down below 12 volts. You know, especially when your cart dies and your battery gauge goes to zero. So anyway, that's what I would do there. So let's see. Question number 16. I have an old 98 Club Car 57 Chevy car kit I'm restoring. It's got a 9.7 Kawasaki engine. It still runs good. New carb, new governor linkage, new muffler and exhaust. All new wiring and lights. I'm getting it street legal. From time to time, it won't start. I have to start on solenoid with screwdriver. Checked all fuses. Good. Is this a bad starter or what? I understand what you mean. You have to you take a screwdriver and you jump across the solenoid, and that causes the starter to turn over. And uh, uh, 
and it, and it, it cranks that way. So that being said, if that works by jumping the solenoid, then I would back up. So what's before the solenoid? Because you know after the solenoid everything's working and your starter and your starter generator is after the solenoid. So I would have I would have said brushes in your starter until you told me that you, you jump it with a screwdriver and it works. So it's not brushes because that, that wouldn't work if, if it was your brush issue. So I would back up and go back to your accelerator pedal. You've got a micro switch or something that's not, uh, that's not always activating 100% when you, when you could be sticking you know, or something like that. Uh, your accelerator, the first, the first spot, follow your accelerator rods and your linkages and there's going to be a box or something somewhere in there that you open up and there's going to be some micro switches. I'd check every one of those, ohm those out with, a, with an ohm meter, a voltmeter. Make sure they're, they're operating. See if you can find one that's stuck. You might, you might be able to look and see that one of the buttons, the little bitty buttons are stuck or something. That would be what I would check first. Okay. Number 17, I have a 1990 gas powered golf cart. It will start and run for a few minutes and then stall after which it will not crank. If I wait a minute or so, then it will crank again. Uh, FYI, I have replaced the fuel pump and carburetor. Check the fuel tank and pickup. Thanks. Looking forward to our response. Well, it sounds like to me that you have a component somewhere that's getting hot. You know, when the motor gets hot, uh, the motor gets pretty hot. And a lot of times electronic components will wear out over time just from repeated heat cycling. You know, it gets hot and cools off, heat hot and cools off. They'll, they'll, they'll just start, you know, not reacting very well to the heat. So in your case, I would probably be looking at a coal and igniter would be the, the least expensive thing that you could uh, replace next because it's going to be something electronic from what your description. It makes me think that it's something electronic that's causing you the issue. So coal and igniter would be one thing. Uh, another thing, if your car has an RPM limiter, the RPM limiter is an electronic device that can cause some issues. And because of the placement of the RPM limiter on the motor, it's right in the spot on the motor that gets really, really hot. So I'd be looking at something electronic like that in your ignition system that's, that's, that's just dropping out after a certain temperature. All right, number 18. This is from Mike. How much would an easy go 2014 RXV need to be lifted to accommodate these tires? And what size wheel would I need to purchase? Would like them order mounted already? Well, I didn't get the, the size of your tire, but I, I can tell you where to go look. You go to our, go to our website, golfcartgarage.com, and click on resources. There's a little button uh, on the right hand of side of the page it says resources click on resources and there will be all these commonly asked questions and one of them is how uh, about lift kits and tire size and you'll find all the information you need to know there about what the maximum size tire is for for maximum size lift okay let's see number 19 this is from patty how difficult is it to install a lock and key set for dash and beverage tray assembly? Are there replacement keys? The ones, uh, you're, you're talking about, you know, how a stock golf cart just has open glove boxes. You're talking about just you, the one that has doors and locks on it, like maybe to put your phone in or something when you walk away from your car. Well, the ones I'm seeing, you don't even remove anything. They just they just go over the top of your existing uh, dash, and you just put some uh, some screws in certain places and just screw them onto it onto your existing dash, and it comes with the doors. And yes, keys, other replacement keys would be available, but it's not a difficult install. You know, if, to answer your question. Let's see, number twenty. This is from Dan. I've just ordered a club car slash Yamaha 3648 volt golf cart charger Lester Summit 2. I have a 48 volt O cell model Life PO4 which has shut down probably at less than 40 volts. My understanding is that this charger does not include a wake up function. I would appreciate your help in waking up this battery 
so I can use my new charger. This is a lithium ion battery and has gone to sleep. Well, let me, uh, let me tell you my understanding of the lithium batteries in general. My understanding is that none of them, none of them like to go low. They don't like the voltage to go low. And in your case, since it's a 48 volt battery and fully charged, it could be as much as 52 or something or even more fully charged. 40 volts or less than 40 volts is really, really low. And every manufacturer of these lithium batteries has very specific things that they that they require in order for the battery to function correctly like with the battery management system that they use for the for the for that particular battery yes the summit 2 does have a lithium uh, function on it it will charge a lithium battery but you may need to call Ocell and find out you know what the deal is going on because the first thing they're going to ask you is how much voltage is in your battery and you're going to have to tell them 40 volts or less or something like that and uh, they may say something is wrong with it. That's, that's what I would do. I would talk to the, the battery manufacturer first, in your case. All right, let's see. That looks like that's about it for all the regular questions. Let me go over to uh, Facebook and check out, see if anybody's over there. Doesn't look like it. Let me go over to YouTube and see what we have going on there. Have Gilbert Garza and YouTube chat. He says, hey buddy, how can you pull out the headlight assembly on my 2017 club car onward? Thank you, Gil. Well, on an onward, that's the one with the LED lights, I believe, isn't it? Uh, Type in the chat if you're still there, Gilbert, and tell me if that's the LED light one. Because I've seen that before, but I have never actually had to pull one. Uh, but there's got to be a way to do it. Uh, I'd have to, I'd actually have to look at it. I'm not real familiar with the club car onward. I know what car it is. It's a real nice car, but I'm not 100% familiar with how that headlight assembly works. But, but obviously, you can pull it. Obviously, there's a way to pull it. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll leave the YouTube open and the Facebook open for a minute or so, because I've, I've been doing a weekly tech tip lately. Uh, and so this week we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about lifted cars, lifted golf cars, and some of the misconceptions that I have come across when talking with customers. This is what I've noticed through the years, especially on electric cars. This is about electric cars. Customers see an electric car lifted and it has big tires and wheels on it and, it's, and it looks all cool and everything. And men, especially, they see that and they say, oh man, I could take that to the deer lease, you know, because it's, it's electric, it's quiet. So they can sneak up to their deer stand, you know, go through all the deer lease trails, the logging roads and everything and get to their deer stand. Well, that may or may not work with an electric car because what you've done when you, when you put the tall tires on there you've changed the gear ratio of the cart. It may be a little bit faster on flat ground, but you're gonna lose a little bit of power. And depending on how rough your deer lease terrain or your woods terrain or whatever it is, it may not have enough power anymore to, to do what you need to do. And also that's gonna put a lot of strain on the electronic components. So the stock electronic components may not work for your application. They may, it may you may be fine, and, but they, and they may not though. You may have to change your controller to a heavy duty controller. You may have to change your motor to a high torque motor. You, may, you might have to change your entire electrical system depending on how rough your terrain is. So that's why when customers would come to me and they wanted a lifted car or they wanted me to lift their car, my first question was always, well, what is your application? You know, what are you gonna be using it for? If they're just gonna be riding around the neighborhood looking fancy and everything in their, in their, their shiny wheel car, then the stock electronics would probably be okay. But if your neighborhood is really hilly, if you've got a four passenger kid on the back and you're gonna have three kids and, or, or grandma and grandpa and, you know, riding around, you've got a, four, a full size adults on there, 
then you may still end up having to change some of those electronic components just because of the taller tires. The taller tires means you're essentially riding around in second gear now rather than first gear. So like I said, maybe a little faster on flat ground, but you're going to lose a little bit of power. So that's what I wanted to just talk about that this week. Let's go back over here. It looks like we've got somebody, uh, one of them. Let's see. No, it looks like it's going to be it for me this week. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, we will be back next week with some more tech tips and some more golf cart-related issues and questions and answers. And uh, we will see you next week. The garage is now closed.